Newcastle fans TV. Rook, obviously there was a lot that happened the week in the build up. Tell me, how has your week been? <laughs> Crazy, absolutely mental. One that, I, I don't know, one that I didn't think would ever happen. Um, something that I, I can't put into words and will ever able to be described of how we've all felt, but one that we'll never ever forget. And if this has happened this week, what's what's going to happen in years to come? What's going to happen in the future and future seasons to come? And this is just a bite and a bit of the limelight of God. This this could be you every single week. I'll come out of the the stadium and the attendance very shortly. But there was a game to be played today. How do you think the game went? Um, I think it was a game of two halves. If I'm honest with you, I think we started the first half very very well. We had a lot of chances that we should have put to bed that we didn't, which has kind of been part of our season all season. Um, but I think, give that due to the girls, they didn't stop. They kept working hard. Obviously, we made five subs to allow everyone to be involved in the game and have that experience of playing at St James's Park. And I think when you do that, it kind of kills the momentum a little bit. But those girls came on and worked just as hard as we had that have been playing for the full 90. Um, I think we started sharp in the, the second half as well, two quick goals. Um, and then I think we kind of dropped a bit, massive pitch. I think legs started to get a little bit heavy, but we kept fighting. We didn't concede, which was the biggest thing that we went in for. We want, we want a clean sheet, um, one more clean sheet. And we've hit our target of what our target was for this season for clean sheets. But incredible F and fair play to Anik, do you know what I mean? Like they, they went non-stop for the full 90. They pushed us all the way and they didn't stop. So 1-0, referee gives a penalty. I say Brooke Cochran running straight over and taking off Beth Guy and thinking, I'm having a piece of this. Why? What's running through your thoughts there? Um, I said to the girls on Thursday, any penalties, I'm taking it. And they kind of just laughed at me. And I was thinking, well, you can laugh, but I am. Um, and I actually didn't realise it was a penalty. I thought they'd flagged for offside. So I was kind of just like, oh, like moseying about, getting ready to like defend the, the free kick. And then I seen Beth pick the ball up and I was like, whoa, absolutely not. Ran over and I just said, Beth, give me the ball. And she went, all right, OK. Um, and it was kind of put the ball on the spot and I just stared out the ball and knew exactly where I wanted to put it. I have manifested this, right, all week. I'm not even lying. I've even manifested scoring from a corner or scoring a penalty. And even last night I was going about it. Every time I woke up, I was thinking, where am I putting it? Where am I putting it? So, yeah, and it was kind of like, what a way to sign off in front of family, friends, 22,000 fans and scoring at St James's Park. It's not for everyone, is it? Well, you've made history. You're the first female captain to score. You're the first female captain to play. The first female captain to win. 22,000, as you say, that is that number, just to put it in that perspective, even the men's professional game in the championship can't even get that. That, what a turnout. What an incredible amount of fans turned up today. 22,000. You can't beat it, can you? Like I, I said when I first had my um, interview with you when I come back from my injury, there's no support like the Geordie support. It doesn't matter what you do, they will support you and they will back you all of the way. And I think if we can get that in Tier 4 football, what can we get when we move up through the leagues? I mean, look at the support. There was people here from everywhere. There's people that's travelled over 200 miles just to support us. And I think it's amazing. It's, it's overwhelming. and. It's something that will live with all of us forever. Um, you've, we've made history at the end of the day, I mean, what a day to do it on. What next for NUFC women? Because 22,000, we know that the owners are looking to put money at the club. What next? Because the title is so, so close this season. Can you go on and push on and get promotion? This season? Possibly next season? Next season, um, 100%. We can't do it now this season after the result was just being found out about Liverpool Feds. And do you know what it is? They're, they're a great team. They are, and as much as I think we deserve it more, fair play to them, and I congratulate them, and I hope they do the well next season. But next season, it's ours. It's ours to take, and I think if we can build on what we've done this season, and we'll go into next week's game, like we are still able to win that league, and we will still perform, and we'll take it right through to the end of the 90 minutes. Um, so, yeah, next season's there for the taking, and I think from what we've built on today, the whole season as well as that, even at Kingston Park, we've gone from 3,000 fans to 22,000 fans. Um, yeah, it's there and I think the support that we've been given and the drive that the owners have got for the women's team is unbelievable and I think that's pushing the girls and the coaching staff on even more as well. One more question, you just hinted on there, you're signing off. We've seen it in the match programme as well that you're announcing. Well, I like you announce it. Tell us what's happening and why. Um, yeah, so I actually decided at the beginning of the season that I would have one more year back of playing after I tore my ACL. Um, obviously it's a, a big injury that a lot of people don't come back from. Um, 
And at the time when I'd done it, I was in a quite a tough place and didn't know whether I was coming back or not. Came back uh, and knew that I wanted one more season. And I've had a few injuries along the way as well this season um, and struggles. So I announced on Thursday to the girls, well, I tried to announce it without breaking my heart that I will be retiring next Sunday. It will be my last game for Newcastle United. Um, and I'm doing that because I'm in the right position for myself. Um, thinking long term for myself of where I want to go. I'm heavily involved with coaching now. Um, and I want to be heavily involved in coaching within Newcastle and within the girls set up. Um, and I've had my time here. I've been part of the building blocks. I've been here when I had to bring my own football. I've been here when I was wearing my own kit and paying sponsorships and paying subs and stuff like that. And what a way to sign off. Um, it's kind of like, there you go, it's there, it's all done, all the hard work's been done, now go and showcase what you can do and go and prove why we should be in leagues above. And I would have loved to have won the season on my last season, but um, at the end of the day, this performance that we've just done, scoring at St James' Park in front of 22,000 fans with a team that I love, for me that is winning the league and there will not be anything that will beat that, that feeling. Last question, does anybody want to thank personally from you? to family members, staff, foundation, the club, fans, your last message to everybody. Yeah, thank you to everyone. Um, thank you to all the girls, the coaching staff, um, the background staff. Um, thank you to the fans who's kind of been our 12th person because I think without that support this season, we wouldn't be where we are today. And I think that's shown today as well. Um, but most of all, thank you to everyone that's been involved and pushed us to work harder and get through this one last season and kind of be my backbone when I didn't think I'd be able to do it, so yeah. Thank you, Brooke. Well done. Thank you.